Well, I think the, the Lebanese people are, 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 are furious and they are out on the streets demanding systematic change, not just um, a change of personnel at the top. And I think that, that for many Lebanese who have borne the pain of this latest um, uh, incident in Lebanon, this just kind of highlights the, the brokenness and the decay at the heart of the system. So I think their concern is that you're really going to get a, a, a change of, of government ministers, but not the, the, the fundamental structural change that is needed to get the country back on the right track. And I don't think they're, they're going to be appeased by that. And I think we are likely, therefore, to, to see some, quite some tensions going forward. Incredibly difficult to bring around institutional reform into a country, particularly at this point, and you look at the crisis and the situation on the streets. What is it going to take to fundamentally reform Lebanon? Well, I mean, this is, this is the incredibly difficult situation. The nature of the Lebanese state... Um, the, 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 the sectarian patronage networks that have been established means that the elites, uh, the financial and political elites, are very much tied and invested in the status quo. Um, and it is very hard to overcome that. We see uh, there is some intention from, from Western players, from the French and the Americans and others, to try and get more systematic change. But at the same time, there are both forces within the country um, and, and regional forces, the Iranians and others linked to Hezbollah, who very much want to maintain that status quo. So it, it, it's fundamentally difficult to imagine how that change is going to happen uh, without the Lebanese people really driving it forward themselves and, and, and putting the pressure so intently on, on the Lebanese elite that they have to, to, to give way.